Good morning and welcome to ICA's online service. Before we get started, here's a few things you might want to know. There will be no FNL, YDP, or Young Adult services on February 8th to 9th due to the Lunar New Year holiday. We will be back again the following week. Vision Sunday is coming up February 18th at ICA East and February 25th at ICA West. Set your calendar to join us on Sunday that week to hear what new things ICA will be planning for the coming year. ICA will have its first mission trip of the new year to Central Sulawesi on March 4th through 8th. It will be men only and the cost is 4.5 juta. Registration closes February 18th, so sign up today. ICA volunteers, get ready for Equip Night on Wednesday, February 28th at 6.30 p.m. at ICA West. It'll be a time of training, team building, and fun. Dinner is provided, and come dressed up as your favorite movie character. We will be picking the best costume for a special prize. See you then. Giving to the ministry at ICA is easier than ever. Just scan the QR code of your mobile banking app or enter the account number on screen to make a transfer. Your generosity is what makes the ministry at ICA possible. ICA Sermon Notes can be found every Sunday on the Version Bible app. Just check the events section for your campus location to find notes and scripture for the Sunday message. For more information on upcoming events at ICA, valuable links, or missed announcements and sign-up forms, download the Church Center app. It is your one-stop shop for all things ICA. want to welcome you this morning to ICA. We are so glad that you are with us. I am Pastor Marianne. I am the children's pastor here at ICA. Before we begin uh, the message, I just have a few things I just want to let you know about. Vision Sunday, it's coming up in the next few weeks, and we would love for you to come and hear the vision and the direction that God is leading us for this new year. Also, at the end of the service, we will be taking communion together. So if you want to make sure and get your elements ready so that you can take communion with us. Last week, we actually started a new series. And the title of that series is Jesus, Journey with Christ. Today, the message will be about facing temptation. As I begin, I want to ask you a question, and I want you to think about this thought. Does God lead us into temptation? Now, last week we talked about how Jesus came in the flesh. Have you ever wondered why Jesus came as a human being? Or why he came to be one of us? Remember that God has a purpose in everything he does. And everything he does and everything he created, he reveals himself to us. Just like we learned last week in Colossians 1.15, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Why did Jesus have to come as a human being? Why did he have to come and be one of us in the flesh? Yes, it is for the sake of salvation, but why are there chapters and stories written about his whole life? From his birth, to his baptism, to his temptation, and his calling and ministry. Jesus' life is a roadmap to us. It shows us how we can live for God and walk with him, having a relationship of love and obedience. Jesus' life is also a blueprint for us. It shows us how God has a plan for our lives, and we can serve God and know him our whole life. And Jesus' life is a living example. It shows us that we can have a relationship with God and live a righteous and holy life guided by the Holy Spirit. 
2 Timothy 1, verses 9 through 10. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserve it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. And now he has made all of this plain to us by the appearing of Christ Jesus, our Savior. He broke the power of death and illuminated the way to life and immortality through the good news. Now, the series title is called The Journey with Christ. So I want us to talk about that a little bit this morning. Our hope with this series is not that you just have more understanding and knowledge of Jesus, but that you go on this journey with him. God wants you to encounter him through the life of his son, Jesus. Jesus wants a deeper relationship with each one of us. So each week, as we go through the sermon series, put yourself in the story and be willing to surrender and encounter Jesus and the love of God like never before. Let Jesus reveal to you who he is and how to have a deeper relationship with him, showing you how to live a holy, righteous, and abundant life. So the next stop on our journey is the baptism and the temptation of Jesus. After Jesus' birth and childhood, the next stop in his journey in the Gospels is his baptism and then his temptation. Now these two events are linked together. In the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we see the baptism of Jesus, and immediately following this, Jesus went into the wilderness and was tempted. So first, I just want us to talk about the baptism of Jesus. Why is this event important, and why does it come before his temptation? When I asked this question, I saw this story in a new light and in a new way I didn't think about it before. And also how it is a roadmap and example for each one of us in our lives today. Luke 3, 21 through 22. One day when the crowds were being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized and he was praying. The heavens opened and the Holy Spirit in bodily form descended on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. So the other question that many people ask is, why did Jesus get baptized? It was not for the repentance of sin, because Jesus never sinned. But in Matthew, Jesus says this, to John the Baptist, Matthew 3, 15. But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. Jesus saw his baptism as an act of obedience, advancing God's work. Jesus accepted baptism in obedient service to the Father and God showed his approval. In baptism, Jesus was showing that he was both God and man. He underwent baptism and even death as only a human could. He lived a sinless life and rose from the dead as only God could. Jesus encounters the Holy Spirit and God gave him approval and his identity. He was his son. That was his identity. He brought the Lord great joy, and he is well pleased was the approval that God gave him. This encounter with God would carry him through the wilderness and facing temptation. The application of this is for us. Just like Jesus, we make a decision to obey and follow God, making that commitment and surrendering of our lives to him. When we do, we encounter his presence. He shows us who he is and who we are in Christ. He gives us our identity in him and his approval. 
These encounters with God carry us through the wilderness and help us overcome and find victory over temptation in our lives. I was actually reading the other day in Isaiah, in chapter 6, when it talks about how Isaiah encountered the Lord. And in the commentary, it said this, His encounter with God permanently affected his character. Can this be said about us? Have you had that kind of encounter with God that it permanently affects your character? I can honestly say that I have had that type of experience. And it really does carry us through. Just so quickly, I just want to tell you a little bit about that story. So I was like five when I had that first encounter with Jesus and accepted him in my heart and asked him to forgive me of my sin. Then I was about eight years old when I got baptized in water. And I remember that was a really important event in my life. We had to go by boat to this place called the Gates of the Mountains. The only way you could get there was by boat. And I remember going into that lake and being baptized and coming out. And I just felt like it was my decision. I was making that decision to follow him. But then as I went on, I always struggled with who I was in Christ and my identity and my self-worth. And I remember when I was in the fourth grade, we started going to an Assemblies of God church. And I started going to camp at Glacier Bible Camp and as a teenager. And I remember encountering God there like I never had before. And I was really struggling with who I was. And at the altar, it was, I just felt like the Holy Spirit just laid his hand on my back where I couldn't even... I couldn't even get up. It was just the, this like, it was like he was right there. And in that moment, he gave me a revelation of who I was in him. And this scripture verse, this is like my life verse, Matthew 13, 45 through 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and he bought it. When I read that, and when the Holy Spirit spoke that to me, it was like him saying, you are that pearl to me. And a pearl, it's made by that irritation of sand. And that's almost like, you know, that, that sin in our life. God takes us and he changes us into something beautiful when we surrender our lives to him. And then when it says, when he discovered that pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and he bought it. And that to me was Jesus dying on the cross for me, that he did everything. And so from that moment on, it was like God saying that you are my pearl of heaven. And that encounter with him has really permanently changed my character and my life. So now we get to the temptation of Jesus. There's a VeggieTale video for kids, and one of the characters in there is Larry the Cucumber. And he is called Larry Boy, which is the superhero. But anyway, <laughs> in the one episode, it's called Larry Boy and the Bad Apple, and it's all about temptation. And Larry says in there, with chocolate comes great responsibility. <laughs> Through the whole story, it's about how they get entangled in this temptation and they have to repent and they have to turn away from that temptation. So that's what we're going to talk about today, that Jesus was tempted in every way we were, but yet did not sin. So we go from baptism and right away in Luke chapter four, verses one through two, it says, then Jesus full of the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the spirit in the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing all that time and became very hungry. Have you ever noticed with your walk of God, you like have that breakthrough moment, that encounter with him, and then you're led into the wilderness or you come to this place of temptation. That happens in our lives. And we also see this happen with Israel, 
They were delivered from slavery. They walked through the Red Sea, and then they have to walk in the wilderness. Jesus also experienced this in the same way that we do, and the same way that Israel did. So we come to the wilderness, and we will go back to that question that I asked you at the beginning. Does God lead us into temptation? We see here that the Holy Spirit doesn't lead Jesus into temptation. He leads him into the wilderness where he faced temptation. Matthew 6, 13. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. We will face the wilderness in our lives just like Jesus did. There's some things that we should watch out for in the wilderness. The wilderness is a lonely and isolated place. It can seem hopeless and dark. We become very vulnerable when we walk through the wilderness. It makes us feel all alone and very susceptible to the lies of the enemy. We must remember when we are in the wilderness that we are not alone. God has equipped us for battle. We have the Holy Spirit. The wilderness deepens our faith. The wilderness helps us walk in humility. The wilderness helps us realize our dependence on God. Jesus faced three temptations. The first one was a temptation of appetite, a physical temptation. Luke chapter 4, verse 3. Then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. So this appetite is the desire of our flesh or feeding of our flesh. It's a physical need. Addictions, obsessions, our self-image, taking whatever we want and justifying it, selfishness. These are all those these temptations that fall underneath this appetite. In temptation, the enemy usually uses doubt, doubts that make the temptation real in, in this appetite. Can I trust that God will provide? And weaknesses that Satan tries to exploit, hunger, impatience, a need to prove his sonship for Jesus, a need to prove ourselves. Luke 4, 4. But Jesus told him, No, the scripture says people do not live by bread alone. Jesus always responds with a scripture. This scripture that he is quoting is in Deuteronomy 8, 3. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people... Do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Then temptation number two, ambition. Luke 4, 5 through 7. Then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and the authority over them, the devil said because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you will worship me. These are things like success, pride, idols, self-reliance, greed, control, power, and achievement. This is where it's like the temptation in our mind psychologically, those needs. The doubt is, would God rule? And the weakness that Satan tries to exploit is desire for quick power, easy solutions, and need to prove equality with God. You can see all of these things in our own lives, but also in the world. Jesus' response to this temptation, Luke 4, 8. Jesus replied, The scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. He is quoting the verse from Deuteronomy 6.13. You must fear the Lord your God and serve him. When you take an oath, you must use only his name. So then we come to the third temptation, approval. 
Luke 4, 9 through 11. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off, for the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect and guard you, and they will hold you up with their hands so that you won't ever hurt your foot on a stone. So this temptation is searching for earthly significance, seeking the approval of man, proving yourself worthy, lifting yourself up in front of others, proving you are better than everyone else. This is the emotional need that we have. The doubts that make the temptation real is, will God protect? Can I trust him? Weaknesses that Satan sought to exploit in this temptation, pride, insecurity, and need to test God. Jesus's response, Luke 4, 12. Jesus responded, the scripture also says, you must not test the Lord your God. He is quoting the scripture from Deuteronomy 6, 16. You must not test the Lord your God as you did when you complained at Massa. Now, temptation and testing is not a one-time thing. Luke 4, 13. When the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. This verse reminds us that we will face temptation and testing many times because the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking to whom he can devour. The word also says, resist the devil and he must flee. And we see this with Jesus. When he resists the devil, the devil flees. He must go away. So with all that, we all know those temptations. They're so common to us. And we need to realize in our humanity, we will always yield to that temptation. We must have the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus to be able to resist those temptations and overcome them. It is not a sin to be tempted, but a lot of times we feel defeated. We feel like, I know I've done that. Oh, we almost give in to it. I was tempted and we feel defeated. But we can overcome and resist temptation. And that's what Jesus is showing us today, that we don't have to be defeated, that he has provided a way out. So how do we overcome? We must remember these things today. First, Jesus was showing us that it is possible to resist temptation and that he did it in his humanity. Hebrews 4:15. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. Second, God will help you when you face temptation. You don't have to feel defeated because you are tempted. God is faithful to provide a way out. 1 Corinthians 10:13. The temptation in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Third, God has equipped you and given you his armor, which we see in Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6:10. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. And he has given you the offensive weapon of the sword of the spirit, which is his word. This is what Jesus used to defeat the enemy. Ephesians 6, 17. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Psalms 119.11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And also, don't forget to pray at all times, being in constant conversation with God. Ephesians 6.18, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. 
stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Remember that we also have the power of the Holy Spirit. We must walk in the Spirit and remember that the Holy Spirit is fighting for us, just like the Holy Spirit was with Jesus in the wilderness. 1 John 4, 4, But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in the world. Lastly, we have victory and we can overcome because of what Jesus did on the cross. 1 John 5, 4 through 6, For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son, by his baptism in water, and by shedding his blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit, who is truth, confirms it with his testimony. I think this is a great opportunity at this point for us to take communion together. It is his body and his blood and what he did for us on the cross that sets us free and helps us have victory and overcome temptation and the evil one in our lives. So let us take the time and take communion together. First, let's take the bread. First Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 23. For I pass on to you what I receive from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's just pray over the bread for a moment. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the body that you gave. We thank you, Lord. We remember what you did for us that you were broken, that you were beaten, and that you died on that cross for us so that we can be in right relationship with God and that we can have victory in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Let's take the bread together. Then it says in verse 25, of 1 Corinthians 11. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's pray over the blood. Lord, we just thank you so much for your blood that was shed for us so that we can be in right relationship with God. We thank you for taking our sins, Lord, upon yourself so that we can be pure and holy before the Lord. Lord, we just thank you for everything that you've done. Let us partake the cup together. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. So before, before we let you go today, I just want to bring this all together and how it applies to us. Jesus wants you to be on this journey with him. I don't know where you're at. If you're at the very beginning, today is the day of salvation to come to him, to know him, to start this journey with him. And maybe, maybe you've done that in your life but you haven't gone any further. You haven't really started that or really encountered him. 
and committed your life. And that's really what baptism represents when you say, I am going to follow him. I'm leaving my old life behind and I'm going to walk with him on this journey. And if you're there today, today is the day to take those steps and say, okay, I am going to follow you and I am going to do that, Lord. We must surrender and make a choice to obey and to follow him. God wants you to encounter him. He wants you to have and know his presence. And he wants to reveal your identity, who you are in Christ. If you haven't had that moment with God, God wants to do that for you today. He wants to reveal himself to you like never before. But maybe today you're in the wilderness and you feel just all those things I described. You feel lonely, you feel isolated, which the enemy does that. He makes us feel isolated and all alone, maybe hopeless. Know that God has a purpose and a plan for the wilderness in your life or the, the wildernesses in your life because we go through many. He is there with you. He will reveal himself to you in the wilderness. Don't give up or lose heart. You can be an overcomer today. The temptations and testings of the enemy don't have to defeat you any longer. But it may take you letting go of some things and laying it all out there and saying, I am not going to do that. I'm going to turn. I'm going to make a 180 and turn away and not allow sin to to have a a hold on my life any longer. When you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Put on the full armor of God. Use the sword of the Spirit and pray in the Spirit at all times. Let's walk in victory today. You can overcome temptation and testing just like Jesus did. I'm going to pray for all of us. Lord, I know that there are so many who are hearing this today and you want them to encounter you right where they're at. God, you know exactly where they're at. It is not a mistake that they are hearing this today. God, I know that there are those that need that first part of the journey. They need salvation, God. I pray that they would find your salvation today. God, I pray for those that need that encounter with you, need to know their identity, need to know your presence. I can't. I pray right now that you come in like a flood to wherever they are and they encounter you like never before and you speak directly to their heart. Lord, I pray for those who are walking through the wilderness. I pray that they would know right now that they are not alone, that you are there. That Yes, you maybe have led them into the wilderness, but it's because you want to reveal yourself to them like never before. You want to show who you are, and you want to show them that they can live a victorious life. God, I pray for those that keep facing those temptations, that are facing that temptation maybe time and time again, that today is the day that they find victory, that they resist the devil and that he flees, Lord, that they find victory like never before. God, I pray your word would come into their hearts. I pray that they would take time to read your word, to hide it in their heart, just like the Psalm says, to put on the full armor of God, so that we can distinguish those fiery darts of the enemy, to take up the shield of faith, put on the helmet of salvation, so that we can have victory in our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray and ask, amen. I would encourage you this week, and even even just take some moment wherever you're at, after this, we're all done, Take some time and just spend some time with with God and Jesus today. Let him speak directly to you. Let him come in. Let Let yourself have an encounter with him because that's what he wants to do in your life today. He wants you to live 
a victorious life. That's why Jesus came and walked. You can overcome temptation and testing just like Jesus did. We thank you so much for coming today and we hope that you come back again. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us today at ICA Online. We hope you had a great Sunday and we look forward to seeing you again next week. There will be no FNL, YDP, or Young Adult services on February 8th to 9th due to the Lunar New Year holiday. We will be back again the following week. Vision Sunday is coming up February 18th at ICA East and February 25th at ICA West. Set your calendar to join us on Sunday that week to hear what new things ICA will be planning for the coming year. ICA will have its first mission trip of the new year to Central Sulawesi on March 4th through 8th. It will be men only and the cost is 4.5 juta. Registration closes February 18th, so sign up today. ICA volunteers, get ready for Equip Night on Wednesday, February 28th at 6.30 p.m. at ICA West. It'll be a time of training, team building, and fun. Dinner is provided and come dressed up as your favorite movie character. We will be picking the best costume for a special prize. See you then. The YDP Scholarship Fund has a new QR giving code. The YDP Scholarship Fund helps underprivileged youth in our community to be able to pursue their dreams of a college education. Giving for this fund will now have its own QR giving link. It is easier than ever now to give and support the dreams of our students at YDP. ICA Kids is looking for volunteers to help with music, singing, sound, and LCD. Please help make a difference in the next generation and sign up to volunteer today. ICA Sermon Notes can be found every Sunday on the YouVersion Bible app. Just check the events section for your campus location to find notes and scripture for the Sunday message. Giving to the ministry at ICA is easier than ever. Just scan the QR code of your mobile banking app or enter the account number on screen to make a transfer. Your generosity is what makes the ministry at ICA possible. For more information on upcoming events at ICA, valuable links, or missed announcements and sign-up forms, download the Church Center app. It is your one-stop shop for all things ICA. ICA is looking for volunteers to help us with our service media and hospitality departments. To learn more, scan the QR code on the screen. Let's serve God and His people together. Small groups are the best way to get connected and meet people at ICA. If you are not yet part of a small group, visit our website or the Church Center app and check out what group might be right for you to join and sign up and get connected today. If you need prayer, we want to pray together with you. Visit bit.ly forward slash ICA prayer online and let's believe God together for a breakthrough in your life. ICA online prayer service happens every Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. Check our social media on Tuesdays for the Zoom link information and gather with us to worship and pray together. ICA has services every Sunday in person and online on our YouTube channel at ICA Surabaya. Service times at our West Campus and online are at 8 a.m. for Bahasa and 10 a.m. for English. At our East Campus, our Bahasa service is at 8 a.m. and our English services are at 9.15 and 11 a.m. Join us each Sunday to worship and grow together. Follow ICA social media on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. There you will find important information, devotions, playlists, and interesting content and updates for you.